Action News, Drew Carey, and Bush 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 B
stand-up comedian, a skilled improviser, and the host of Price is Right. We love him on Price is Right. And he loves Billy. Okay. Let's play the theme. Please welcome Cleveland's number two son, <laughs> Drew Carey! Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, what's your favorite thing about Cleveland? What do you miss about Cleveland? Uh, the low, low rent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if there is a difference. Yeah, man. I miss everything about Cleveland. I go back there, you know, whenever I can. Mm -hmm. Went back there for a couple of Browns games. Don't ask me why. Uh, it was just to be sad, I guess. Uh, I. The, uh, but we still love them. You know what? I. I don't know, but I, I still. Have you seen the Green Room? I miss the snow. Oh yeah. Do you, can you believe it? I really do. It's fun. I don't know what it is, but something about getting up and shoveling snow before you go to work. Yeah. You feel like a man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You feel like uh, people always complain. Go, how do you get up and shovel the snow? It's like, hey, you get up and you go to work and think, like, hey, extra ten minutes. You get a little muscle in there, and you feel like a man in the morning before you go to work. Yeah, it's a good feeling. You know what I miss? I miss in every car where we're from. There's a stick with a brush on one end and an ice scraper on the other. Yeah. I missed that little tool. I got a, I got a rental car and they had one in there and I was like, yeah, that's right. You have to have it. Yeah, we know that. Just in case. Oh. I had to drive to, I had to drive my, I had a rental car, you know, and I had to drive back to the airport and they had a big snowstorm and it was like a uh, white knuckle. I was like terrified driving back and they, they were on the news saying, if you can't, if you don't have to drive today, don't go out on the road. And I was driving like 25 miles an hour sliding, mm -hmm. you know, all the way to the airport. And uh, I was talking to him, like, and it was great. <laughs> Something about terrified driving, and you never get used to it. You just have to just get, you get used to terrified driving, you know, and that's about it. I wonder if I could still even do it. Remember when we were young, we were taught steering the direction of the skid? Uh, I was, all those I got to the airport, I was covered with sweat, <laughs> exhilarated, you know. Um, you threw out a pitch at an Indians game? Yeah, I'm afraid, man. That's pressure. Yeah, because you don't look like an idiot. <laughs> uh, I was I was playing, uh, I, was, I had to throw out a pitch in an Indians game. I don't, I'm not a really good thrower of anything. I'm not an athlete that way. And uh, I was playing catch with one of the Indians, and uh, Jim Tomey was playing catch yeah. with me. And he's huge. And uh, when he would throw the ball at me, all I heard was <laughs> And then the, the ball hit my glove, and my hand hurt the rest of the day. <laughs> and I would throw the ball to him, and it bounced on the ground. <laughs> And it was like second to first, you know, it wasn't that, it was 60 feet, it wasn't that far. And he would like, or 30 feet, whatever, and he would bend down and pick it up and throw it to me. And the, ah, whatever, my hand hurt. And the pitching coach came over and said, do you want me to show you how to throw like I teach the little kids? <laughs> and I go, yeah, please do. And he go, you got to throw and hit the giant in the chin and hit the little guy in the head. And that's how you have to throw. You have to wind it. And I said, oh, thank you. So I was able to throw the pitch and get it over the plate. Yeah. But if it wasn't for that guy, it would have been just, like, bounced on the ground. So, Drew, you, like you love sports. <laughs> like a girl. Stop. Like, <laughs> you love sports, but you didn't play. You weren't an athlete. I, uh, not really. I wrestled a couple years in high school, but I was no good. I never made even JV or anything. I got beat up all the time. You know. Yeah. I, I was the practice dummy in school. I was no good. And look at you now. Athletes. Yeah. But my bobblehead has a beer belly. Well, <laughs> it's an old model. Yeah, I still got a little bit of it. Yeah, it's an old model. Because you're the only person outside of Indian players that has one of these. Yeah, it's pretty cool being a non-Indian player to get a bobblehead. They were really, they've always been super nice to me, you know. Yeah, or, or at least I guess that's what they told you, that you were the only one. <laughs> is, there an, is there another that I don't uh, know? Oh, oh, there. Hey, look at that, man. <laughs> um, I haven't accepted it yet. <laughs> Sorry. But there is one. That's quite a, <laughs> quite a flattering... Uh... <laughs> okay, it's actually my Kevin Garnett bobble here, but that's right. That's right. That's want to be as popular as, as you in Cleveland, man. I bet you could do it. I mean, I think me and you and... Uh... <laughs> I think you, me, and Halle Berry ought to go back to Cleveland one time, all at the same time. And that would be cool. Start demanding some things. Yes. 
Before we go to break, I got something special for Drew. I told you I did. Guitarist Don Felder, former Eagle, is going to take us to break playing Hotel California for my homie. Yes. Go for it. for Valentine's Day. No, this is on YouTube. No. But uh, we were also talking about the Eagles. Yeah. And uh, Kenny King's. Yeah, Ken Kenny King's is a restaurant in Cleveland that doesn't exist anymore. But you can get KFC chicken there. Uh, KFC, the famous chicken brand, that should buy an ad on their Arsenio show now. Because <laughs> uh, everybody needs a little KFC. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know my fans like chicken. I'm not supposed to say that. But... <laughs> Come on, now. Come on. The colonel cooks it well, but you know we the origin of chicken. My fans like chicken. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes Everybody chicken. Likes chicken. Uh, so uh, you could get, it was a, a chain of restaurants only in Cleveland. They had a, uh, a license to serve Kenny, uh, KFC chicken in a diner. So you could go get a, a sit-down dinner with KFC. It was, a, it was great. I, mean, I always wondered how that worked, especially when I got here. They got in early on the game when, when the colonels just knew. And, got a, <laughs> and, uh, and they, they somehow slicked it so they got, you know, it was in there. So uh, I used to go to this Kenny King's place all the time, and there was a big Cleveland thing, mm -hmm. and everybody would go to KFC, and I got my only, one and only fight my whole life. I wrote about it in my book, uh, Dirty Jokes and Beards. You can get on Amazon.com for like 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Get old copy for 25 cents, and uh, yeah, these guys walked out on their chicken check. It was like a, it was like five bucks for this yeah. chicken, and it was a to-go order. It was three guys that were drunk, and uh, they were about to walk. They, they were like, yeah, my old lady, and blah blah blah. You know, sitting there having my coffee, and they were about to walk out. And a guy put his check, and sh put his check in, a, in his shirt, and walked out. And I went to the waitress. I go, do they pay? She went, no. And well, I, you saw this on your I own. Saw, yeah, got involved. Yeah, and I was in the I was in the Marine Reserves then, and, and uh, I had my short hair and my glasses like this. Yeah. I can't make a big deal out of it. <laughs> I kept the commies out of Ohio. That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my whole Marine Corps experience. And uh, so I followed him out, and I said, "Hey, you didn't pay the check." And the guy's like, "What are you talking about?" And I go, "I saw you walk out." And he goes, uh, "What are you a cop?" And I go, "No, but I saw you walk out on your check." He goes, I'll knock your glasses off your face. And I go, I'll take my glasses off right now. And then he, boom, like, plowed into me. And we got in this big fight in the middle of Kenny really? Yeah, we knocked out all the dishes, broke all the dishes, knocked over a bus thing. Uh, and we were like, I remember he tried to, like, get at my eyes. I remember biting him. And uh, <laughs> we were, like, swearing and calling each other this and that. You know, names mm -hmm. you call people when you're fighting them. Yes. And, uh... <laughs> The, uh, the other guy was old, so it was just like the two younger guys that were bigger. And the, the cooks came out, and I remember I, I was like thanking God in my head because the, the, the two cooks came out on the other big guy, mm -hmm. and he was just like, uh, uh, and they're like yeah. knocking the cooks off, and I was like, I'm glad I got this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, like five Parma cops show up. It was in Parma. So five Parma cops shows up, and they, they break up the fight, and the whole place is busted up. B bus tray, and the King of Kings had to buy everybody's dinner. Of, I just should have let him walk out with a $5 check. Yeah. And... <laughs> And after all this, I'm in this, my only fight, you know, and the, this guy comes over to the table with the cop. This guy was swearing in front of my kids. He's really? Yeah. I was like, eh, eh. 
I'm trying to do a good thing. What a, yeah, you're yeah. a thankless deal. Yeah. Well, I called him a <laughs> <laughs> and your kids. <laughs> oh, you know, you talk about taking off your glasses and, and you took them off. I've never seen you without your glasses. That's such a signature look. This is, see, that's. Uh, wow, look at you. I'm out now. <laughs> yes, I'm drewed out now. Wow. Wow. Man. And, and you know what? You've worn these a long time, but that's a hip look. Now, there are people who wear those and don't even need glasses, because it's cool. Yeah. So, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. You ever had people... Don't forget who the originator is. Yeah. I mean, but do people come up to you and, and, and have a... Like, I know you have a unique car I've seen uh, on TV. I was in, I was in a... Uh, this happened to me in Cleveland. I was at a... I was at a... We'll call it a bar in yes. Cleveland. Uh -huh. And uh, I was talking to these <laughs> <laughs> and you're very quick. We'll call it a bar. That was brilliant. No glasses. And I'm talking to these three women at this bar. And they kept on saying, what do you do? And I'm like, don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kept on saying, what do you do? And I changed the subject. And yeah. finally, they like, come on, what do you do? And I go, all right, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the TV business. You know, yeah. I figured they would get it. Yeah. And, uh, oh, oh, really? Uh, what do you do in the TV business? Yeah. And I go, and this is like, a couple years ago. I'm famous in Cleveland, believe me. Yes. Oh, believe us. Yeah. And so I go, I, I go, I, I'm a, I'm a game show host. And they go, oh, really? Which game show? <laughs> wow. The price is right. And I go, I go, the price is right. The price is right. Mm. Like that. And the woman looks at me, she goes, ah, oh, I thought uh, Drew Carey hosted the price is right. Wow. <laughs> I go, it is he to whom you are speaking. That's exactly yes. what I told him. Yes. Then I put on the glasses. There you go. Yeah. That's him. Without the glasses, you look like Craig Kilborn. <laughs> so he's a good-looking guy! <laughs> <laughs> hey, did they offer you the prices right initially and you turned it down? Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I've been taking uh, acting lessons and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I was kind of retired, but I thought I'll take acting lessons and maybe do a couple roles here and there, do something, do something, do something different. And uh, I'd done a pilot for a game show, a nighttime game show called The Power 10 that was on for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got back on the radar, because I was off everybody's radar. I was like, completely gone, out of show business. And, um, you know, a friend of mine was doing this pilot, and I did it. And CBS, that was for CBS, and that's how I, they heard about me again. And uh, so I, I was driving from New York, uh, and I got a call from my agent on my phone. And he goes, I got the most interesting call from CBS casting. And I thought to myself, like, oh, hey, I really got a CSI or, you know. <laughs> Whatever, and they were like, "How would you like to take over for uh, Bob Barker on The Price Is Right?" And I was like, "What?" Like that was the complete opposite <laughs> yeah, yeah. of what I had in my head. Yeah. I said no, and then uh, a couple weeks later, after the Power Ten got picked up, I got another call. Hey, uh, CBS called again. They want you to do. Uh, so after about The Price Right, I go, "How much do they pay?" We don't know. Uh, what's the hours? We don't know. I will find all that out. Maybe I'll have a meeting with them. And then, that, then I found out, and then I how much the money was and stuff, and I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you love doing it. I love it. Yeah. Great show. I mean, I, honestly, everybody's so friendly there, and the, uh, the people there are so much fun. It's like the greatest thing I've ever done. It's like being high all the time. Ah, ah. You are one of those people in Hollywood who believes that marijuana should be legal, and you're not necessarily a pothead. No, not necessarily. No. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't see it. It shouldn't be illegal, you know. Yeah. And I don't know why. Uh, I'm glad I own a soccer team up in Seattle. That's all I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what's good when you're stoned? What? Penny Kings. Bring that chicken out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, no, I'm just oh. kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm really yes, not. I do. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love we'll be back with more Drew Carey.
situation. Um, a lot of people don't know that Drew Carey has an honorary doctorate from Queen State University. Yes. Yeah, yeah. From their dental school. Really? Yeah. I spoke at the, I was like, spoke at a graduation there or something. Yeah. That's cool. Well, um, <laughs> Before uh, the show started, we asked the audience if they had any questions for you. And that's why we call this segment, Ask Dr. Drew. Karen. Dr. Drew. Okay. 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 We have audience members. Rebecca is first. Okay, our first question for Dr. Drew. Karen. Uh, comes from Rebecca. Rebecca, what's your question? I just wanted to ask him, why do men wake up with erections? Because we can. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and Better than waking up without an erection. <laughs> That's why. I think she probably... Because we need something to do after we hit the snooze alarm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, and Morel, is that your name, sir? Are you Morel? What? No, the smoky marijuana kills off brain cells. The smoky marijuana kill off uh, brain cells. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mariah. Uh, Jackie, step right up. Step right up, Jackie. What's your question for Dr. Drew? Karen. Hello, Dr. Drew. I'd like to know what can I do to get past the two minute mark in bed with my partner? She wants to get past that two minute mark in bed with her partner. This was on you, my friend. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> I'd get yourself another partner. <laughs> Sounds like they agree with Thank Jeff you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, well, uh, it... <laughs> you can, I mean, you could actually, like, stop at, like, a minute 45. <laughs> In all seriousness, stop at a minute 45 and then, you know, go back to something else and then start again and go back, you know, and do it that way over and over. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes over and over equals six minutes. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's why you have that doctorate. Yeah. Math skills and stuff like that. Somebody, somebody asked me once if the price is right if I had any kids and I went, not the way I do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great response. Okay, young lady, you're next. What's her name? Uh, Shelly. That's Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Hi. So, Dr. Drew, yes. how can you tell if a person is faking an orgasm? Uh, Shelly, to be honest, I don't even care. <laughs> That's on you, Shelly. That's your business. I'm doing my business, and you do your business. Exactly. You know what I mean? I can't please everybody. You know what I mean? If you can't be honest with me, then we, we got no future together. Thank you. Are, are you. Are you married? Yes. Do men fake orgasms? Not that I'm aware of, but... What are you going to do? Maybe, a glass of maybe water someone else will <laughs> Yes, men do fake. Ah! Ah! Spoosh! You got it? is right every weekday on CBS yeah. at 11 a.m. and see him live Valentine's Day in Medford, Oregon at the Criterion? Is that how? Uh, Criterion Theater. Yes, yes. that's right. And, and, and February 15th in Salem, Oregon at the Ellsnore Theater. We'll be right back with Charlemagne.